Hello people, this is Self Tuts and we are continuing our series on AWS Lambda and in this video we will see how to set up AWS CLI which is Amazon command line tool to interact with Amazon Web Services. So in our subsequent videos we will see how to create Lambda functions using AWS CLI. So basically AWS CLI is a command line tool that will be installed in your local system and this AWS CLI which is a command line tool helps us to interact with Amazon Web Services. So basically when you are creating small functions or, or when you are creating uh, or when you are learning Amazon Web Services like AWS Lambda then it is easy to use the Amazon Web Services using the web console which we have done in our previous videos. But as the project grows and the number of Lambda function increases then it becomes very tedious to manage all of them through your web console. So there is a need for AWS CLI where you can write your own scripts to upload a Lambda function, to, to edit a Lambda function or to delete a Lambda function. So basically setting up AWS CLI for AWS Lambda is a multi-step process. The first step is to install the AWS CLI and then we need to create a user in AWS IAM. So IAM is the identity and access management service which AWS provides. So what this IAM does is we can create users there and, and we can attach policies to that user. So the user will be authorized to perform some, some action on a particular AWS service based on the permissions that he is having. So we need to create a user in IAM and we need to provide some roles or policies to that user and using that user you can interact with the AWS CLI to the Amazon Web Services remotely. And the third step is to configure the AWS CLI. So we need to create a user and then we need to configure this AWS CLI to interact with a particular Amazon Web Service. So we'll see all this, these three steps one by one. So first we'll try to install the AWS CLI. So for installing AWS CLI, we have some prerequisites. The first one is Python must be installed on your system. So if you are using a Linux system, then Python comes by default. So you can install 2.7.x or you can install 3.4. So there is no uh, hard rule that you have to install Python 3.x. Python 2.7.5 is also fine. And then pip must be installed. So what is pip? pip is a package manager used by python so suppose you are installing a package and that has dependency on some other package so if you are doing it manually then you need to download and install all those dependencies but what this package manager pip does it downloads all the dependencies by itself so you don't have to worry about what my dependencies are for a particular python module like suppose aws cli if you are trying to install AWS CLI, then this may have dependency on some other modules. So what pip will do, it will automatically install all those dependencies. So to install AWS CLI, we need to fire this command that is sudo pip install AWS CLI. You need to have root permissions for it because it will affect some root folder. So we'll try to do this installation and we'll see. So I'm in my Linux box, I'm using Vagrant, I've done a series on Vagrant also, how to make your development environment using Vagrant, so you can refer to that also. So I'm in my Linux box and I'll see what is the version of my Python. So I'll say Python minus minus version and it will say that I'm using the Python version 2.7.5. I'll say if pip is there, so yes pip is also installed there, I have just fire the command pip and it say and it gives me the different options that pip handles so i'll try to install aws cli so i'll fire the command sudo pip install aws cli so what i'm telling python manager pip please install aws cli for me and what this pip will do it will collect everything the dependencies for the aws cli and see this bot core is a dependency for AWS CLI and it is installing it and other dependencies are already installed in my system so it says that requirement already satisfied so pip is a very good tool and you all 
and you should always install python packages using pip so now i'll say aws minus minus version and it will give me the version of my aws cli so it is saying that the version of my aws cli is 1.111.128 so the aws cli has been successfully installed now what we need to do we need to create a user in our aws im so this local system is is having aws cli but it is not it is not connected to any remote aws services so we need to uh, connect this aws to a particular amazon web services for so for that we need to create a user so we'll go to our browser and we'll go to our amazon web services i have already created an account here so i can log into my console if you want to use the features of this amazon web service then you need to create an account and you get a basically free tier for one year so i'll sign into my console and inside my console i can see this services tab so i can go to uh, uh, go to this services tab and inside this security identity and compliance i'll click on im which which is stands for identity and access management so in the user section i'll go there and i am having a previous user that is self duds so i'll try to create a new user so this time i'll say self duds cli so this is a cli user and access type is programmatic like enable an access key id and access secret key so you need to select this programmatic access next i need to provide some permissions to it so i need to create a group here so i'll create a group so i'll say aws cli self touch so this is my group and i need to attach some policy that what are the different permissions that i'm providing so i'll search for aws lambda and i'll search for aws lambda Uh, L A M P T A. Okay, so I'm searching for AWS Lambda, and I'll say provide the full access of AWS Lambda. So you can, because suppose you are writing your logs in AWS Lambda, so you need to have CloudWatch access to write those logs. So I'm giving full access. You can minimize the access or like a particular cli user has the permission to only create and update a aws lambda but don't need uh, but uh, it has not the permission to delete the aws lambda functions so at present i'm giving the aws lambda full access you can provide some access which you want uh, it's up to you so i have created the group and this is my aws cli self touch i can select multiple groups here i can provide multiple permission so i'll say next review and then create the user so the user has been successfully created and it creates an access key id and a secret key so currently i'll show you that and after this video i'll delete this access key id and the secret access key so these are the two things that you need to configure your aws cli so the aws has been config uh, installed here aws cli so i'll say aws configure so in my slides you can see that after installing aws cli you need to create a user in aws im and after that you need to configure the aws cli so that the aws cli can know that which users amazon web service i have to interact with means what are the permissions i am having so just i'll go here and say aws configure so this will ask me about some access key and access id so it is asking me what is the aws access key id so i'll go to my uh, browser and i'll copy this and i'll go to my linux box again and i'll paste it there same way it will ask me for aws secret access key so i'll go to the chrome browser and i'll copy it and I'll again paste it here so i'll say this is my aws secret access key now the aws provide multiple reasons where you can uh 
uh, upload AWS Lambda service. So each reason is entirely separate from other. So you need to provide the reason. You can get a list of uh, reason that AWS provide by searching it on Google. So I use US West 2. So I'll say that my AWS default reason is US West 2. So if I'm uploading or if I'm creating a new AWS Lambda function, then that function will be stored in the US West 2 region. Then AWS CLI provides multiple output format like JSON and table or text. So I'll say that my format is JSON. So the AWS configuration, AWS CLI configuration has been done successfully. Now you must be wondering that where these credentials have gone means I have provided an access key ID and a secret access key, but where they are stored. So when you are configuring your AWS CLI, then AWS CLI creates a folder in your home folder. So I'll press CD and it will take me to my home folder. So here, if you'll see, I'll do a LS minus LA. So LA says that you can see your hidden files. So if I'll show you, I'll go up and you can see that a dot AWS folder is present here. So this is hidden because if I'll show you, I will simply do an a, a, ls means list my files. So it shows only these files which are not hidden. So to show uh, to see your hidden files, you need to supply minus la flag to it. So that creates a aw dot AWS folder in my home folder. So I'll go inside it and I'll say it cd dot aws then it will take me to that folder and if here i list my file i can see config and credential so if i'll say credentials then it can show me that the default access key that i have provided is here and the aws secret access key that i have provided is here same way if i see my config so i can see that the output format that we have defined is json and the region that that we have defined or stored is us west 2 so now you can understand that when i fire some command through aws cli then it will read these two files which are present in my home folder and inside dot aws folder so this way you have configured your aws cli in your local system to interact with your amazon web services so this was all about setting up your aws cli for aws lambda in my next videos we'll see how to create lambda function through AWS CLI without using web console just by writing some commands in your command line tool. So this was all about this video. If you like my channel, please subscribe to it. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Thank you.